Hey everyone, it's Marcello back from the Toyota World YouTube channel and I'm back here at beautiful Maple Toyota and behind me here I have a 2022 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid XSE and in this video in the most simplest and easy to understand way possible I'm going to explain how the hybrid system works in the Toyota hybrid vehicles. Okay, everyone. So first of all, there's four different type of hybrid powertrains with the Toyota lineup. So let's just make that very clear. Uh, the hybrid power system or powertrain system that's on a RAV4 hybrid is different than the powertrain system on a RAV4 Prime, Prius Prime, uh, for example, a BZ4X and so on. So first, let's distinguish the four different hybrid platforms. So first, starting with the most common, well-known, and the most high demand is the hybrid electric vehicles. And that's vehicles like the RAV4 hybrid, the Camry hybrid, um, the Sienna hybrid. The way this system works is it's two motors. You've got a electric motor and you've got a combustion regular engine motor. Uh, they are both coupled together to produce power. The electric motor is actually ran by a separate battery, not the regular battery that you see underneath the hood. It's usually a separate battery that sits somewhere underneath the vehicle. Now to make things even clearer, uh, the hybrid electric vehicles do not require any kind of plug-in system. They don't need to be recharged uh, by, you know, via electric outlets and so on. Uh, these hybrid electric vehicles get recharged every time you apply brake force to your actual brakes. It's called regenerative braking. And next on the list is battery electric vehicles, otherwise known as BEVs. So these are vehicles like the BZ4X. And the way these systems work, well, these vehicles run on zero emission. That's right. They are powered by electricity alone. That's it. They do require to be plugged in, but they also have a self-charging capability, otherwise known as, like I mentioned before, regenerative braking. And number three on the list is not so well known, and that's the hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles like the Mirai. And the way this technology works, it actually uses hydrogen as an energy source to power high output electric motors, which actually only emit water out of the tailpipe. So right now it's only the Mirai that has this technology. Uh, we don't have uh, this vehicle here in Canada, but the technology is out there and it is called hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles. Next on the list, and this is the final version of the hybrid system, hybrid powertrains that Toyota has to offer. And that's the hybrid plug-in or electric plug-in vehicles, vehicles like the RAV4 Prime, the Prius Prime. And here's how this technology works. So in the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, there is two motors. There's the electric motor and there's the regular combustion motor. So similar to the hybrid electric vehicles like the RAV4 hybrid, Camry hybrid, and so on. However, on the plug-in hybrid vehicles, you do have the option to plug in and charge the electric motor, which will give you an extended range of uh, electric uh, drivetrain electric powertrain so you do have the capability to drive more and longer with your electric system only we have uh, actually one of our sales reps who've been here for a while had a prius prime for a demo and our demos typically stay on the road for about six months and i think he said in those six months he only visited a gas station like two or three times so plug-in electric vehicles are definitely fantastic so now that we've covered the four different models and four different versions of the hybrid systems that Toyota has to offer, we're gonna actually talk about and break down, like I mentioned, the most popular, high demand, most well-known, and that's the hybrid electric vehicles like the RAV4 Hybrid, Camry Hybrid, Sienna Hybrid, the Tundra Hybrid, and so on. So let's get to how those systems work. All right, so I'm inside of this beautiful 2022 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid XSE. Now, typically guys on startup or at a idle or very low speed, you're usually only gonna be using the electric motor itself. Typically at these kind of conditions, the combustion engine will not kick in and will not be used. Also, when you're in reverse, it is usually just the electric motor that's working. And that's because there is a power control unit that actually 
shuts down the gasoline combustion engine in situations like this when you're at an idle or when you're at a very low speed or in reverse. So you'll notice anytime you're reversing uh, into the RAV4 hybrid, your Camry hybrid, your Sienna hybrid, you're always gonna notice it's just the electric system that's running the vehicle. Okay, so now that we've covered what happens during startup, going into reverse, low speeds, and even at idle, what happens when you accelerate? So when you accelerate quickly and forcefully, what typically happens is both the combustion engine and the electric motor get coupled together and work together to provide power to the wheels. So when you are driving under normal conditions, typically what happens is it's both your combustion engine and your electric motor that are getting used. But when you need to accelerate quickly and forcefully, uh, let's say you have to floor the gas pedal for whatever reason, uh, typically what happens is it's just your combustion engine doing most of the work. In these kind of conditions, you're not really using much of the electric motor itself, and it's typically burning more fuel than it normally does under regular driving conditions. Okay, one of my favorite parts of the hybrid systems in these Toyota vehicles, the RAV4s, the Camrys, the Priuses, and so on, and that's the uh, regenerative braking. So there's no need to charge or plug in a RAV4 hybrid or a Camry hybrid or a Sienna or a Tundra hybrid. These vehicles get their batteries recharged every time you brake, and here's what happens. So when you apply the brakes and you brake in the vehicle, what happens is the vehicle's hybrid system recycles that energy and throws it back to the battery, which powers the electric motor, which means you're continuously charging or providing a charge to this battery system. So it's very, very hard, or actually I should say impossible, for this electric battery to run out of power because every time you're braking, every time you're decelerating and letting onto the, ga uh, letting onto the brake pedal, you are providing extra power, more power, recharging the battery of whatever was lost and it just it's a continuous cycle it keeps going as you drive there's never any need to plug in this vehicle and guys that's not all this is such a cool system so right now i've had the vehicle started this rav4 hybrid i've had it started for about five to seven minutes i'm sitting inside the vehicle it's in park it's been idling so what's happening is you're you're using the battery like i said the uh, combustion engine is not actually uh, burning right now. It's just running on electricity, uh, on the battery, on the electric motor. So what's going on now? Because I've been in idle in so long, look what's happening to the actual hybrid system. Check it out. So what's been happening here? Like I said, I've been sitting in this vehicle at idle for just under, I would say, 10 minutes. And I guess because the battery has been operating the power of this vehicle, the electric motor, I should say, the engine is now supplying power. See that? It's recharging the battery as I'm in idle because I've been in idle for so long running on the electric motor. So after a couple of minutes, the vehicle understands that you're sitting, you're idling, the electric motor is running, your battery is being used, but you're not driving. You're not, you're not using your regenerative braking to charge the battery. So, hey, let me grab some power here from the engine and send power back to the battery. How cool, how smart, guys. These Toyota hybrids, I mean, they're just amazing. Now, your most beneficial time or driving conditions for a hybrid electric vehicle is typically in stop and go types of driving. So city driving, uh, city traffic, and here's why. Okay, so here's the thing with the benefits of being in a hybrid electric vehicle in stop and go traffic or in city driving. When you brake often, energy is getting regenerated more frequently and this continuously supplies the battery with ample amounts of energy which allows the vehicle system to rely on the electric motor more often and in turn saving you more money. And yes, have you ever heard someone say that the hybrid electric vehicles are a little bit more peppier and a little bit more responsive on the acceleration and the gas pedal? Well, that's because in a regular combustion engine, in a regular non-hybrid vehicle, typically to get the most amount of torque output from the engine, you would have to get to a certain RPM range, which is usually anywhere around 4,000 or 5,000 RPM or so. But on hybrid electric vehicles, the electric motor generates 100% 
of the available torque right away to the gas pedal. So that's why in the hyperelectric vehicles, RAV4 hybrids, when you put your foot to the gas pedal, you are feeling a great response and a very good acceleration compared to a non-hybrid RAV4. That's right, so this means you can actually accelerate faster and smoother in a hybrid Toyota vehicle. So there's a myth going on that the hybrid Toyotas are much more expensive to maintain over the course of the lifetime of the vehicle than a non-hybrid Toyota. Well, I can tell you that's not true. If you ever have to replace the battery on a hybrid vehicle, then yes, I can understand, but I've been here for 15 years. We've never once replaced the battery on a hybrid Toyota. Uh, maybe one time we did, and that's when the customer tried to convert it to something else or tried to do something that he you know, played around with the battery, and that's why we had to replace it. Otherwise, we've never replaced the hybrid battery. And like I said, I've been here for a long time, and we've had taxis come in, Camry hybrids, Priuses with like three, four, five hundred thousand 500,000 kilometers, even more, never had to replace the battery. I did a video about a year ago or so on the overall hybrid maintenance cost, and it's not bad at all, guys. It's very similar, if not the same or less than a non-hybrid Toyota. Actually, the hybrid maintenance schedule and maintenance plan is pretty much identical to the non-hybrid Toyota vehicles. So the myth is broken. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this review. If you did, smash it with a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next one. Hopefully now you guys understand a little bit more clearly how your hybrid system is working on your Toyota vehicle and what type of hybrid systems actually exist out there for the Toyota lineup. Catch you on the next one, guys. Take care.